Good morning, and welcome to First Congregational Church of Houston. We want you to know that whoever you are, or wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. First Congregational Church was gathered in 1955 to be an open church. That is to say, a church that is welcoming to all people. So we extend that same welcome to you. <laughs> Whether this is your first Sunday worshiping with us, or you've been worshiping with us every Sunday for 50 years. And if you're a guest here, and this is your first time worshiping with us, I encourage you to go to our website and download a copy of the bulletin. In it, you'll find the order of service and also a list of all the announcements so you can find out what's going on at the church. In addition, if you are visiting, I'm Reverend Lynette Ross, and I'm stepping in for our pastor, Reverend Jonathan Page, who is taking a much-deserved break. You'll want to be sure to come back next week to hear him preach. You don't want to miss that. So now, on this second Sunday after Christmas, let us join our voices together and sing. pray with me. Weeping and yet consoled, we have been gathered by your strong, tender arms, O God. You have ransomed us from terror too strong to overcome, and you have freed us to flow like living waters upon the earth. Let your spirit flow through us, that every spiritual blessing might be ours for the receiving and the sharing. Amen. Good morning and Happy New Year. Our scripture for today is from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, 
Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who has scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord is ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy, I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. I'm going to tell you that trouble will come into your life. Not the kind of trouble that comes from painting the dog or being your baby sister Play-Doh. Those are little troubles. Don't get me wrong, you're going to be in big trouble, mister. But there's an Irish blessing. May all your troubles be little ones. And it means both ways. Ask your parents if it isn't clear. But capital T, trouble, will come. And there's a word for the capital S, sadness, that'll come with it. And that word is grief. Now, mourning is what grief looks like on the outside. And lament is the expression of grief, like when you say it in words. Do you remember the last time we had a reading from Jeremiah? We talked about the form of lamentation. Poor Jeremiah was capital S sad. A lot but he was a prophet and in today's reading he writes that then shall the young women rejoice in the dance and the young men and the old shall be merry and I will turn their mourning into joy I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow Grief is a little bit like being in an escape room. It is where you are. And lamenting and mourning are the ways that you figure out about the room. And then you're gonna to need to do something, right? You need to find a way forward, a way. And that time before you see the way, that's a little bit panicky, isn't it? But when you figure it out, it's really exciting. But you're still stuck in the same room. Everything changed though. Well, that's what joy's like. It was always there. There's a guy called Walter Burkhart who defined contemplation as a long, loving look at the real. Now, contemplation is a big word for the kind of prayer where we listen for what God has to say to us. It helps us to realize that God is everywhere and always there. And you participate in the joy that is God everywhere and in everything. Maybe you watched Polar Express this holiday. In fact, one of the great things about being a child is that you're more able to see what is real and feel the joy all the time. Drink it in. So let's close with a prayer written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Um, you can hear his book 
God's Dream Red on the FCC Houston YouTube channel under the playlist Storytime. Dear child of God, you are loved with a love that nothing can shake. A love that loved you long before you were created. A love that will be there long after everything has disappeared. And God wants you to be like God, filled with life and gladness and laughter and joy. Amen. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Good morning again. And welcome to 2021. I'm guessing that we are all hoping it will look different than 2020. A great deal different. Who could have imagined a year like 2020? I'm also guessing that as you heard our scripture reading from Jeremiah this morning, you could relate perhaps more than you would have in the past perhaps in a way that you couldn't have before the pandemic. Will we be gathered again? Will we rejoice? There's no question that this pandemic has taken and is taking an incomprehensible toll on our world. And the impact is far from over, even now. I know it feels like we've been exiled. I get that. But here's the thing, God has never left us, even while we're apart, even in the exile, and God continues to gather us, even in the midst of this pandemic, even as we sometimes feel exiled, and even as we sometimes feel alone. And you know, as we examine the history of humankind's relationship with God, we see that God has been gathering us for centuries. God has been forever gathering us over and over again. God gathered the Israelites as they escaped Pharaoh. God was with them in the wilderness and led them to the promised land together, gathered in community. Jesus spent his whole ministry gathering people in community, large and small. And his followers continued to do the same as the fledgling Christian community tried to avert the power of Rome. And I don't know about you, but whenever I see a table full of food and folks gathered around it, I think of Jesus, who broke bread over and over again as he gathered people in community, connecting them. So it's fair to say gathering must be important. And it's also fair to say we're the ones who keep on gathering. We move, we separate, we have wars, we have pandemics, we have losses. But God forever gathers us back and is always in our midst. God doesn't gather and then take off. God gathers and God is in the midst, our midst, through time and circumstance. Now, true, gathering hasn't looked the same over the centuries. It has looked different. But gathering has the same purpose, however it looks. We gather because we seek community, connection. And we need connection and community with God and with each other. God knows that. And that's why God keeps gathering us. So... When we are eventually brought out of exile, what will that look like at FCC? Exactly like it looked on March 8, 2020, the last time we worshiped in the meeting house? If you looked at us on that date, you would see a church that had traditional worship, great music and great preaching, children's church, Sunday school, coffee, tea, and conversation every Sunday. Now, not a hint of anything high-tech, if you will. No video streaming of worship. 
some sporadic audio podcasts of sermons, but no social media presence to speak of, just lots and lots of emails. Oh, and we do kind of like to print things. If you looked at our church on March 8, 2020, you would see a church that multiple generations would recognize. <laughs> then COVID-19 changed everything. Now we have online worship via Facebook, our website, or YouTube. And the worship includes lots of information about what is going on at FCC. You can even go back and watch worship services you missed or just watch part of the worship, perhaps just the sermon. And now you can find us all over Facebook with events and words of encouragement and announcements and even a live midweek prayer service. Our website contains a great deal more information about who we are that's so important to those we hope will visit us. Is that all going to end when we're no longer in exile? When we return from captivity like the Israelites? It will no more be exactly the same for us than it was for the Israelites brought back from exile. And I say to that, thanks be to God. Because of COVID-19, when we return from exile, FCC is going to be exactly what it was on March 8, 2020, and then some because we want online worship to stay. It not only helps us reach out to the community, but it allows folks who are sick or out of town to still be with us, gathered together in community. And when you invite folks to experience our church, the online worship service is a great way for them to get a taste of who we are before visiting in person. We love our Facebook presence and the improvements to the website. And Zoom has become a great tool for meetings and other things. You know, I've been, I've been reading this book about visioning. And it contains a story that resonates with me deeply. It's about a watchmaker. My father was a watchmaker. He was the kind who sat bent over a watch bench with his magnifying eyeglass on. I can still see him at that bench and see him lift up his head and smile when I walked into the store. He repaired watches, jeweled movement watches, watches with over a hundred moving parts sometimes. He was a craftsman. Then quartz technology changed everything and watches no longer had springs or gears. My father had two choices. He could either throw up his hands and complain that things were not the way they used to be, the way they should be. Or he could embrace the new technology and become just as skilled in repairing quartz watches. He chose the second option. But that didn't mean he stopped fixing watches with springs and gears. It didn't mean he stopped loving those watches. I own several that prove otherwise. This new year gives us a chance to further embrace something new, something that isn't just an exile experience. We've been talking at church for several years about trying to develop a robust small group ministry because we know how much it connects people, gathers them together. We've had several unofficial small groups for some time. The Sisters of Mary Magdalene, the Men's Lunch, and one for parenting and families. Small groups, or more precisely, growth groups, can be an important element in creating that connection, that community, leaning into the gathering that God is forever doing with us. A couple of years ago, Pastor John asked Gary Wuerl and I to lead a Northwest Houston small group. I laugh at calling it a Northwest Houston group because we stretch from the 1960 area all the way to near downtown. We're a group of new FCC members and longtime FCC members. We just meet and eat once a month. That's all, nothing earth shattering. We're still doing that. Only now during the pandemic, we're doing it outside on the grounds of the church. We recently redubbed ourselves as the soul food group because during the pandemic, that's what it feels like to us. I count these folks as my friends. 
And I don't know if that would have happened without this imposed gathering. The truth, though, is as important as that connection is and community has been, this gathering hasn't resulted in the creation of more small groups. In addition, our membership has remained relatively static. So last spring, we started a more robust small group plan. Kelly Stevens leads the effort, along with Peter Overland, and it utilizes a new approach. It was launched with the summer semester 2020. And as a result of the pandemic, what was as envisioned as a in-person, community-building, connection-making, God-gathering program <laughs> became an online Zoom experience. I led one of those first groups along with Robin Stilwell. This fall, I participated in two of them. Despite being in exile, despite the pandemic, these groups have been a gift to me. You see, I'm still relatively new to FCC. I'm single and have no children. I've met a lot of folks, but except for the people in my soul food group, I didn't really know a bunch of people or know much about them. On Sundays at church, I would say hi to folks, enjoy worship, and afterwards usually have a cup of hot tea in the assembly room, eat a couple of biscottis, and then head home to whatever else I had planned for the day. Then I became a deacon, and Sundays became about doing my deacony stuff. <laughs> I greeted a lot of folks, especially visitors, but spent even less time in real conversation. It is the growth groups that I've been a part of, where I've started to know people better and feel connected and gathered. Our check-in time at the beginning of each Zoom session has been as meaningful as the content. I love hearing what is going on with people in my growth group, although I'm embarrassed to tell you how much they know about my two cats. All these months of the pandemic, I've felt connected and gathered with my church family because of the growth groups and my soul food group. You see, small groups can be a place where new friendships are formed. That's certainly been true for me. They are a safe place to meet new people, make friends, grow in faith, and have fun. People grow when they step outside of their comfort zone and are exposed to new ideas and new people. I'm a bit reluctant to tell this story because I got it from a Christmas movie. Don't ask me how many I watched. It was a movie entitled Noel, where Noel, who is a girl, becomes Santa Claus rather than her brother Nick. Noel is talking with someone she has met who struggles with the changes in his Christmas traditions. Noel says to him, traditions change. New ones are scary, but they might be great. And if you know what Christmas means to you, the tradition is just the wrapping. Perhaps we could reword that and say, traditions change. New ones are scary, but they might be great. And if you know that what is happening is God is gathering you, then the new tradition is a gift. Growth groups are a new tradition at FCC. A new way for God to gather us. There'll be Zoom groups for at least a few more months. Some may stay Zoom even when we return from exile. The spring 2021 growth groups start in February and signups begin today. I know there is one just for you. Some are groups that are continuing, like the mindfulness group I'm in. The wine tasting group is continuing, and if I were a drinker, I'd be all over that one. There are several more that are continuing as well. New ones include a racial allyship group that will focus on a, a book to read. Don't let that scare you. I did a growth group this past semester that included a book I had to read with my dictionary next to me, and it was still enlightening and inspiring. There'll be a topic-oriented grief group and a church and society-themed group. Don't they all sound good? I wonder how many I can manage in a week. 
So I'm asking you to take a look at what is being offered and jump in and sign up. Perhaps ask someone new to FCC to join you. We will be together again in person. The day will come. Here is a new type of gathering God has given us that connects us, even in exile. And now let us pray. God gathers us from the farthest parts of the earth. God brings us together, a great diversity of people. God surely will meet us where we are. Surely God will save the people. Some come weeping in need of consolation. Some are confused, needing to find a straight path. We are a great company of seekers. Come with a radiant delight before our God. Come with joyous dancing and singing. God offers us life in a watered garden. God brings us joy and gladness and abundance.
Amen. God of grace and mercy, on this second Sunday in Christmas, we come before you in gratitude for the many gifts in our lives. We're grateful for the love we have, the food and shelter we enjoy, the connection and the gathering that is forever offered to us by you. We pray for the courage and the patience to continue to stay apart until it is safe to be together again. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning again. I'm Eric Tosky, and we come now to the time of offering in our service. We ask you to consider all of the things that First Congregational Church does uh, in its ministry to the life of the congregation and to the community of Houston. My wife, Sean, and I have been members here for about 12 years, uh, and since our very first day, that we visited First Congregational Church, we were quite impressed with how the congregation focuses its energy and its commitment on bettering the community, on social justice. And that's something that is very important to us, and we support what this church does with our time and treasure. So we ask you to consider all of the things that FCC does and provide financial support to the congregation in the way that you're able. Our preferred method would be through Zelle, and you can find instructions to do that from your bank app or in the bulletin, and you could also send a check by put by the mail. So we ask you now out of the spirit of gratitude to donate to the life of this congregation. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. And now please join me as we say together our mission. Welcome all into an inclusive community. Seek to follow Jesus' teachings. Search for more truth and light. Support one another on our faith journeys. Strive for peace and justice. There's just one announcement today. It is the first Sunday of the month, and so we will not have coffee, tea, and conversation after worship. Instead, join me in a communion. Uh, the link is in your bulletin or on the website. 
We look forward to sharing communion with you. And now, this benediction. Go forth warmed by the promises of God's eternal care. Go forth joyous, for you are a part of God's eternal gathering. Above all, go forth sharing the glory and grace of God who creates, redeems, and sustains.